Good evening everybody. So we are live on Facebook. Let's just check the YouTube. Come on YouTube, where are you? So YouTube is taking its time. Hi Emma. Oh, here we go. YouTube is kicking in, which is good. <laughs> So skip the advert because we don't want to look at adverts. So good evening, everybody. Oh, there's a few of you there already. Bless you. <laughs> and you're all kicking in. Oh, it's back to normal on a Monday. Obviously, I wasn't here last week. Let me take the subtitles off Facebook because it won't say anything like I'm saying. Hi, G. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Right, let's take this screen off. We're going to have some fun tonight. You can see my lovely layout that I've got here, ready for tonight's demo. Hi, Lona, how are you doing? I've got my coffee on the coffee warmer, so that's good. I'm just trying to read you. You missed me last week, oh, bless you. Well, at least I was on your box. Not for long, right enough, but at least I was there. I need to change my glasses, hang on. I wondered why it was blurry looking at the screen. Hi, Michelle, Sandy, Julie. Good evening to everybody. Mandy, Jan. I can just see your comments. Emma needs a laugh tonight. You're probably going to get one. Oh, you can see my lovely ring. How about that, Emma? <laughs> Hi, Hazy, babe. Bridget. Jenny, right, everybody's starting to kick in now. So what I thought we would do tonight is something a little bit different because you've seen me, we've used the chalky paints loads recently and I wanted to use the luster powders because there's more to do with the luster powders than you think. So we're going to actually make our own paint. So I've called this video um, Candy Something because we're going to do some lovely candy coloured like pastel shades and we're going to we're going to actually make our own paints so you may have seen me do this before uh you may not so if you haven't you're in for a treat but it's something uh, a little bit special so you all know I love the luster powders anyway there's there's just so many different ways you can use them and Karen is here, so she'll be shoving links all over the place for you. But I have popped links on all the um, in the description on Facebook and on YouTube. So for some reason, YouTube is showing me loads of adverts, which is an absolute pain in the neck. I mean, why are they advertising JD Williams to me? I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested in JD Williams, so sling your hook we're interested in luster powders thank you very much so uh if you haven't had any of the luster powders we currently sell them as individuals or in sets of five so the sets of five i've put them together myself uh i can't remember what they're called like botanicals and stuff like that phil can you use them in powder for cat so carol on facebook is just asking me uh Phil, can you use them in a powder form to put onto card without using water? Um, you can, Carol, but you would need to use... You remember... Uh, you can all remember... Oh, God, I can't remember what you call them. Is it Perfect Pearls or something like that? You can use them in the same sort of way. So you would be able to apply them with um, a Versamark or a Perfect Medium. So you would be able to stamp in a Perfect perfect Medium or a Versa versa mark and then dust the powders over the top if you mean can you use them on their own without anything probably you'll just get the color let me just see if i can find a little brush uh where are all my little brushes where's my toolbox where's my toolbox i've got one here that it's covered in powder already Let's try it with your finger. Let me get a scrap rather than using a, a die cut piece. 
and let's find out. So this colour is Lagoon Pool. Let's find out if you can rub it into card without anything on it. And the answer is, you can, but it's very, very pale, apart from my finger. So I've just rubbed that straight into the card. I've never done that before, Carol. And it actually looks really rather lovely. I don't know whether you can see, there you go, you can see the shimmer, so you still get the shimmer. So Carol, the answer is yes. So I've learned something new, and that is without, that is without a Versafine or a perfect medium. Look at that, though. I don't know whether you can see the shimmer, but I can in, in real life. There you go, Carol. Thank you for the question. So good evening to everybody who I haven't spoken to yet. I'm going to clean my finger now because Carol's made me get dirty before I even start. <laughs> So let's get that off my finger. So let's just, for those of you that haven't seen these before, I'm just going to do a little, uh, like a, let me get some kitchen roll. Like a little description of what these actually are. So the, these, are, these are not the same as shimmer shakers and things like that. These are a kind of an all-in-one product. I'll just pick the Lagoon up because it's the same. It's the same colour that we've just used. So what you get is 25 mil in these pots, which is a lot. I, I haven't replaced any of mine, so I've been using my original colours for quite a while. They'll last for ages. Hello in Sweden. Hi, Catherine. So so I these, these last for such a long, long, long time. And what these are, are because I've just told you they're not the same as Shimmer Shakers. They're, I'm going to say they're better, but then I probably would. What you can do with these powders is you can mix them with water to create watercolour paints. Um, obviously, then you're going to get a pearlescent paint. You can use palettes. So you can use them in a palette, let it dry out, and you can um, revitalise it with a little, a little bit of water. So even if these dry out, you can... <laughs> Carol, I've just seen your comment. So even if these dry out in your palette, you can just add a little bit of water and revitalise them. So you can use them with water to create watercolour paints. You can use them for mixing with texture medium, which is mine here. So you can use them with mix them, mix them with texture paste, texture medium, and you will change the colour of texture medium. You can use them with gesso, which is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to mix some of these with gesso to create a paint. So rather than just a watercolour paint, it's actually going to be a proper paint. Um, if you're using these for stamped images, because you can stamp with these as well, these actually have a binder built into them. So you like the old days where you had perfect pearls, you used to have to spray them with hairspray or mist them with water. You don't have to do that with this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Will was just said, sounds like I was introducing Sweden on the Eurovision. That's brilliant. I'd love that job. Uh, yeah, so these have a built-in fixative, so you don't have to worry about fixing it after you've used the product. So these are a combination of fixative, um, pigment powder, and also luster powder, mica powder. So you've actually got three different ingredients in there that make it one amazing product. And I love them, love them, love them, love them. You can, well, love it, love it, love it. He will start with that. So tonight's card is going to be very, very pretty. You can see the layout I've got here. And all I've got here is basic white card. And we are going to create some paints using the luster powders. So I know that I want to do a, a pinky bluey colour tonight. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this pink which is Summer Coral. I'm also going to choose a darker pink, which is Orchid Whisper. I don't know which sets these are in, by the way. Sorry, everybody. And then we're going to have Cornflower Petal. And then I want a green. So shall we go... Let's go this one, which is Verdigris. I might have a bit of lemon in as well. So let's just have Dandelion. I've got a dandelion as well, just in case we have a bit of lemon. 
So we're going to use these powders in a few different ways this evening. If you want, when we've finished, I will show you how to stamp with them as well. Because you can stamp with them. Oh, let me just put this on the floor. They're a really, really good investment. Um, they're a really, really good investment. Do you know what, Emma? Emma's just said she's got a few of the luster powders, but she hasn't used them much. And do you know what, Emma? I'm going to take the blame for that because I don't show you them enough, which is why we've got a lovely... I mean, look at that for a little colour palette. How pretty is that? And I think if I, if I used them more for you when we were doing our lives, you would probably want to get them out more because honestly it's one of the best things I've ever done so I've got my layout here I'm going to tell you straight away what I've used with the dies because and Karen will correct me if I am wrong because doo -doo -doo, we are now at the the end of the stock for these two die sets so if you haven't got the Slimline DL Elegant Eyelets, oops. So the Slender Elegant Eyelet dies, which is what I'm using tonight. They're on offer. They're on offer at the moment. So take advantage. They're on offer because the stock is nearly gone. I think we've got about 12 sets of these left. I won't be restocking them. So once they've gone, they've gone, okay? So I think we've got about 12 of these. And I've teamed them up. So I've teamed up teamed up the slimline ones with the circle ones that coordinate. So I've got the big A4 set. Whoop, sorry, I'm trying not to make you dizzy. So I've got the elegant eyelet circles here, which is what I've used to create this lovely little frame. Okay, these are also on offer. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry, Sue. I'm telling you what's on offer because I know they don't last. So it just gives you a little heads up. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Karen can do a link for me. Yeah, but there you go. So I've used the slim line. So this is a true DL. This is the largest of the... This is the largest of the um, Elegant Eyelet doodars. Elegant Eyelet slimline dies. <laughs> I had to think then. So this is a true DL size. So if you like to make slimline DL cards, this will fit perfectly on top of a DL card. You know me well enough to know that I've made my card bigger because I can and because that's what I like to do. You wouldn't have to do that. It's entirely up to you. So it's still saying JD Williams on Facebook. On YouTube. Karen, I, I don't think your links show on YouTube. I think I have to do it myself. So just bear with me a second, everybody, while I just get the, the links for YouTube. I think it has to be me, Mel. So let's do the slimline ones first. So here we go. Yeah, there's yeah, there's 20% off. These are not going to last. I know they're not. So for everybody on YouTube, I'm just posting you now the link for the slender DL dies. And in a moment, I will get you the link for the um circles that coordinate i've got too many tabs open on the computer i can't see them all <laughs> so let me get you the circles as well and they also have that's quite a saving they also have 20 percent off so i've just done the link for the slimline ones and I've now just given you the link for the circles. Right, so enough yakking. We're going to use these in a couple of different ways. Um, I'm not using them in texture paste tonight. Sorry, Jean. <clears throat> because we are doing painties. 
We're doing painters and we are doing watery as well. So you all know how much I love my chalky paints. Well, we're going to make our own now. So what will happen, as soon as you mix these powders with the um, gesso, they will lose their mica. So the mica will be negated by the chalk that is in the gesso. So effectively, we're going to create... Well, I don't... Uh, I don't need that one, I want that one to be pearly, but I will do these three. So effectively, we're going to create our own unique paints using these two products. So I'll start with the pale pink. So I'm going to create a paint and then we're going to pick it up and create a watery background. I'll do it on this mat, so hopefully you can all see. I don't even know what... <laughs> Jana, I don't even know what J.D. Williams is. I just see the adverts on telly. <laughs> Links are on now. Yeah, I think it's me that has to post them on YouTube. <laughs> so let's show you how easy this is to do. I will take a palette knife and I need a stipple brush. Don't shout at me. I haven't, this has got some... Something that's dried in the end. <laughs> so we may get a couple of extra colours in this. So all you need to make a, a summer coral or a pale pink chalk paint is summer coral and white gesso. Now remember, this is really, really, really important. A top tip. Don't get a single drop of the powder in your gesso. Not one tiny fleck. Because these are so highly pigmented that one tiny bit in your gesso will colour. It will change the whole colour of the gesso. So don't do that. This is why we're doing it in separate parts. Shall I get a drink first before I start? I better do. Oh, oh it's lovely and warm. <laughs> That's brilliant, Chrissy. <laughs> the slimline DL dies. I love the eyelets anyway. I think the eyelets look really, really special. And they are perfectly, well, you, can, you expect that with me. They're perfectly aligned. So I'm going to create a little bit of paint in the three colours. Uh, so that I can water it down and pick up the colour. Now, if I wanted to keep the, the luster, the pearlescent sheen, I wouldn't use the gesso. I would just use water and pick it up, and that will keep the pearlescent sheen. But I don't want that tonight. And I know that there isn't... That's probably too much. I know that there isn't a chalky paint in these colours... So I'm making my own because we can. Products that do more than one thing are worth every penny. And these, these luster powders do so many different things. You can also make your own pearlescent misters. Yeah, you can also make your own pearlescent misters. So top tip for that if you want to have a go. When we were sourcing these little mister bottles, we tried to find some that would accept the powder uh, because obviously we're going to mix a powder with water to make a, a spray. So they, they don't clog up very often, but they will do. If that does happen, just clean the pipes. Just take the pipes out and clean them. So if you were going to make a mister using your bottles, I would only use about that much water. That much water... And just a little scoop of powder, shake it all up and spray it. And you've got your own, you've got your own um, mica mister then. So let's do this colour first. So I'm going to start with hardly any look. So I've dipped the end in the pot. I've dipped the end in the pot. And that's how much has come off. 
So let's see, oh, no oh, bugger. Let's see how strong this is and if it's strong enough. Now you might not be able to see the color in here, but I can. This is now a very, very, very pale pink. Can you see? It's not strong enough. So let's add a little bit more. Let's make it pinker. That's better. So make sure you mix it well. Obviously I've only done a bit because I'm going to water it down. So let me show you this colour now. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at this pink. So we've taken a powder, a luster powder, mixed it with a little bit of gesso and we've made our own pale pink paint. So I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to mix that with water. Mix it all up. Can you see, I don't know whether you can see from the screen, but what we've done here, look, is we've made a pale pink watercolour. Yeah. You can just see that, I think. This is why I've called it candy colours tonight. And I'm going to pick this up. So because I've used gesso, just so you know, before you do it, everybody, because I've used gesso... This will give us a stronger watery background. If you want it paler, oh, look at this colour. If you want it paler, just use less powder and more water. Can you see the consistency is thicker than a normal watercolour? Yeah, so the consistency is going to give us some texture as well. Do you know what I'm going to do while I've got these here? I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to dip my butterflies in it. Oh, it's like playtime. So I'm going to dip my butterflies in it. Oh, that's so lovely. trying to get you to see the colour you can just see it there pop that there and my other one oops that's coloured on both sides <laughs> so move that to one side clean that off and repeat that process Love it. I'll leave that till I've finished. You know what I'm going to say? Love it, love it, love it. So who would have thought this colour... Who would have thought this colour is from a powder? And because we've got gesso in there, when that dries, because I'm going to leave that to dry naturally, when that dries, we're going to get lots of texture from that. Don't snap its wings. I'll try my best tonight. And then we'll tr we'll do the same with the blue. Because I want three colours. Now the blue is a bit stronger. So let's see if it's strong enough in its own. That is so pretty. That is such a lovely blue. I can't tell you which sets these are in. I'm sorry, everybody, because I've got all mine. I've got all mine mixed together. And I've got a bit of blue in there, which is naughty. So mix it up. Spray it with water. Mix it again. And then pick it up. 
So it doesn't matter if it overlaps, we're going for a very candy coloured background. Just get the corner. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just left it natural. Yeah, that's looking lovely. Butterflies, where are you? The colour's going to be lush. It's going to be like a... It's going to be like a... Like a... The consistency. I'm trying to think what the consistency is like. It's like a... It's almost like a creamy colour. A cream, sorry, not a creamy colour. It's like a creamy texture because I haven't watered it too much. And then, and then we're going to have a bit, oh, I don't know which colour to put in. Uh, uh, uh. Do you know what? I might just stick to these two colours. I am. I'm going to stick to these two colours. So what I'm going to do now is wet this a bit more. And just let that run. So I've just wet that a little bit more and I'm going to let that run. So when that dries, which I'm going to pop it in my inky box now. That dries paler than it, paler than it is. So it will drop the, the gesso in there will, will whiten it down. So I've wasted that now. Let's do the flowers. Let's do the flowers. So I want the big one to be pink. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I should have told you at the beginning. I should have told you at the beginning. I'm using the shabby, shabby blooms. I'm using the shabby blooms tonight. And there's six of them left. That's it. These are from last year, the beginning of last year. So there's only six of these sets left. They'll be gone. Sorry, I should have told you at the beginning. So I'm going to use this now to colour the flowers. Let me water it down a little bit more. See if I can make this last. So I'm just dragging it through. I'm not trying to cover the whole flower. I know what, well, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> Remember when this finishes, we're gonna get, when it dries, we're, go we're going to get the lovely chalky finish, which is one of my favorites, as you know. So let's just use a couple more of these flowers up. And I'll do another small one and another big one. So I'm not mixing the flowers up. I'm keeping them in the two tones. Let's clean that up. Cleans up dead easy as well. So I'm not going to waste that. I am going to do it, but uh, I'll do the pink flowers first. I'm not sure whether you can see how wet these are. Let me just do some more pink because I'm going to do the flowers in pink. But we are going to do something else to them in a minute. That's such a lovely colour. Just make that a bit stronger. I 
Don't you think it's remarkable that we that this is from this? It's cl so clever. You can't go wrong with a product that does all these different things. So water that down. Mix it again. Remember to water it down before you pick the colour up for your flowers. And then just drag your flowers through it. I'm going to show you these butterflies in a minute. It dries, it dries as quick as as you like it just depends how much water you've used so the big flower is pink and all the rest of the flowers are going to be pink if it gets too thick just add a little bit more water you won't lose any of the color And then once we've done this, we are going to do one more thing to these flowers. Just get some more on that one. We're going to use the powders direct. I can't see what anybody's saying to me just yet because I'm concentrating. Let me just show you this butterfly now the colours have started to blend. Look at that look. Now the colours have started to mingle together. How gorgeous is that? I can't see what you're saying to me. I'll have a look in a minute. Right, so... Oh, that's so lovely. Oops. Oh, it was till I've just dripped it off. Look at that beautiful colour. So I'm going to leave that to dry naturally as long as I can. I will force dry it if I need to. Sorry Elaine, you must dread watching me. <laughs> So what we're going to do is, let me just clean some of this up. I'm not going to clean it properly just yet. We're going to put the blue flowers on a piece of kitchen roll. Remember my top tip for flowers where you've used, well, anything where you've used water. If you've used water with to, to colour your flowers or anything like this. If you put it on a piece of dry kitchen roll, they dry quicker. So we're going to take the powder now and we're going to dust a little bit on top. And we are when I find the little duster brush that I just had. Where would you be? There you are. Hi Josie. Hi Linda. So I've got a little bit of this on the brush and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tap that on I've got the fan on <laughs> it's a bad idea when I'm using powders like this So we're, we're dusting them now with the luster powder. Now for somebody like me who likes things to coordinate, this is a fabulous thing to do because we already know that this blue is what we use to create the paint. And if you do this whilst it's still wet enough, This powder is going to cling. Oops, that was a bit too much. 
this powder is going to cling to the wet areas. I'm just do a little bit more on that top one. Wait till I show you this. It's stunning. It's stunning. So if I wiggle that, there you go, look. So can you see, look, where the, where the paint, so we've already made a paint using this blue powder. And where that paint was still wet, the luster powders are bleeding into it where we've dusted it on dry. So let me just put that in the inky box and we will repeat that. We will repeat that with the pink and the pink will probably bleed a little bit better because they are, they are wetter than the blue. So something to remember, something to bear in mind when you're doing, if you're going to have a go at this demo, something to bear in mind is the, because we've created a paint with the white gesso, it dries quicker. So it dries quicker than an ordinary paint. So I can see this one is almost bone dry. So I'm just going to wet it a little bit. Just going to add a little bit more there you go a little bit more water if leone was watching me she'd be proud my fingers are filthy <laughs> they won't be for long don't you worry so we'll do the same with the pink and you know me every which way to color a flower you know i'm gonna do it This is so lovely. I wish you could see this in real life. I promise you, if you have a go at this, you're going to love it. So the powder, when, it, when it's dry, the powder will only stay where it's wet. Which is exactly what we're going for. Oh, that was a bit too much. Can you have too much? Well, yeah, you can. But not tonight. Right, we'll stop there. And I'll bring this one in and show you. Because it's already starting to bleed in. If I show you this one where it's wet, if I wiggle it, you should, there you go. Look, you can see that we're starting to get the shimmer. So we've, we've actually had the best of both worlds. We've had the matte colour. So we've had the, the, the summer coral matte, which is what we've used to create the paint with the gesso. And we've now added some uh, dry, dusted on luster powder. So we can create this two-tone thing. I'm not going to do this tonight. <clears throat> I'm not going to do this tonight, everybody, but you can do this yourself. So where I've got thicker areas of the powder here, I'm not, I'm not going to do it, but you can mist it. So if you mist it with the water, it will spread even more. I don't want that look tonight. I want the powder to just sit where it's wet. So I'm going to clean all my mess up. So bear with me a second because I can't work in this mess. It does come off easy. You know I wouldn't be doing anything like this unless it came off easily. So a bit of water. Little bit of water, mist your mat. And it will come off dead easy. It dries relatively quickly and it's quite warm in my room as well. But look how easily this is coming off. Oh, it's nice to have a Monday night demo. It's not as rushed as 
our frantic Thursday evenings. Just while I'm cleaning up everybody, I'll just remind those of you just that might not know. So if you haven't joined our Facebook group, I've just popped the name on the screen. So search on Facebook for Crafting with Phil Martin and Sentimentally Yours. Ask to join the group. And just while I'm telling you, remember you must accept my rules. You must accept the group rules or I won't let you in. And on Thursday evenings, we have our own private little happy hour demo just for the members of our Facebook group. So if you're not in the group, you don't get to see the, the happy hours. There you go. That gave me a second to clean up though. Easy peasy. You know I wouldn't be getting messy if I didn't think I could clean it. You've got to remember that gesso has a content of chalk, which is why my gesso is so good. The, the chalk content is quite high. And that's why I know we can do all these fabulous techniques. Because Best quality product, better results. I'll be happy in a minute. Let me just do this. <laughs> it's nice to start with a nice clean mat. There we go. Let's get that straight and then we're good to go. So we've, we can leave all this to dry naturally as long as we can. So I'm going to pop these in here. I'll check the background again in a second. And we're now going to come to the leaves. We're going to come, oops, we're going to, that was my chair by the way, not me. Plenty there for another background, yeah, there were loads there. You could have done three or four backgrounds with that. So we're going to come to the leaves now. The circles, I'm leaving these as they are. So I'm leaving these plain white because when I bring you that background back, there's quite a lot. <laughs> Do you know what? I, if, you, if, you, if you asked me to paint a skirting board or paint a door, I would laugh at you because I, I don't want to get dirty, but I don't mind when we're crafting. Yeah, so I'm leaving these plain white because we've got enough colour in the background and with the flowers. I'm going to bring the leaves in now. And these are the lovely leaves from last summer. I thought there was another one. One, two, yeah, that's right, three. Three duos and two doodars. Again with the chair, I'll probably show you it is the chair. <laughs> oh, what time is it? Oh, crikey, it's quarter to eight already. Do you know what? I'm going to have a breather. We're going to use the verdigris next. Now, I'm just going to get the link for you for the luster powders because I can see people have been going for them. Uh, so I'm just going to get you the link. I love this, I love this now because it tells me everything that's happening. So I'm just going to pop you the link on Facebook for the luster powders. Remember, I have them in sets of five or individually. So you can just collect a couple at a time if that's easier for you. But the sets of five have been put together... Uh, Oh, Lady M, what a lovely name. Time difference makes you forget to watch. Da oh, I, I, oh, Daylight Savings as well for you, so that's even more confusing. Bless you. <laughs> Me and the chair. <laughs> Me and the chair have a love-hate relationship. Where are you, Lady M? Oh, it's Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Oh, I've not seen you for ages. How are you? 
<laughs> Jen is fanning herself due to the shock of me having dirty fingers. I promise you that washes off with, with just soap and water. I wouldn't do it otherwise. <laughs> Can you sprinkle the flowers with a darker shade of pink or blue? Yep, you absolutely could, Caroli. Absolutely you could. Yeah. Easily. You do you do need these leaves, Elaine. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to show them, yeah. I'm going to show them, yeah. Sorry, Elaine. You can mention my name in any divorce proceedings. So these are the lovely leaves, look. And these are, uh, again, you know what happens. They don't last long enough. And I don't restock. So there you go. So this is that one. What you've got here are 12 dies where you've got a three left and right with the open, a three left and right that are solid, a single left and right that are solid, and also a double left and right that are solid and open. So you've got 12 individual dies. Mine are a bit mixed up because I've got three sets of these. So I can cut more in one go, yeah? And I'm just going to show you all this year's leaves... I'm going to show you this year's leaves because those of you that know me well will know that I like things to match. So the white one is the lovely leaves from last year. The cream one is the floral finery leaves from this year. Look how they're going to coordinate together. Aren't they just gorgeous? Are they just beautiful? Right, so we're going to change the colour of these leaves using the verdigris. But I didn't want them chalky this time. I want us to have the shimmer. Uh, I want us to... I, I don't know the Karen, are you getting Elaine the link for the, the... Yeah, I love them as well, Karen. So, so for the leaves, we are going to have a pale, a pale green, but I wanted the shimmer for them. So if I show you the verdigris, you can see the verdigris got little flecks of glitter in there as well. So we are, we are going to use this in a watercolour format. So I'm just get a brush that's not dried up. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jennifer. How are you doing, Jennifer? I don't, I don't actually mind getting my hands dirty as long as it's just for craft. If you ask me, I've told you, if you ask me to decorate or paint a door or something like that, it's never going to happen. Uh, in fact, I think I've only decorated once in my whole adult life, <laughs> which is shameful. <laughs> So I've, all I've done, we're going to make a watercolour paint with this. So a little bit of water on my mat. I'm going to take some of the colour and just mix it. And in fact, if I do that, you can see the shimmer in that. So verdigris is a beautiful golden green. And I wanted this, I want the leaves to be shimmery tonight rather than... Uh, rather than chalky so i'm just going to paint them well i'm just going to watercolor them which is basically what i'm doing there and then when that dries we will have a gorgeous golden shimmery green which will offset the paleness of the pink and the blue So, and I can hear what you're saying to me. I can do a load more leaves with that. And I've wasted some, but hey-ho. So let me just bring one of these in that's drying already to show you. So this is not dry yet, but you'll get the idea if I wiggle that. There you go, look, you can see that lovely shimmer. 
And I love that. So where I've gone on thicker with it, look. Where I've gone on thicker with it, you've got a stronger colour. That's so easy to do. So easy to do. Right. Clean your mat again. Clean your brush again. And we could have sprayed that with water. Can you see the sparkle in that log? <laughs> you, can, you can actually see the does dabbing the wet brush in the pot not affect the powder uh good question elaine so just to answer elaine's question i don't know whether you noticed what i did because i did it instinctively where did i put the brush water on the mat pick up just dampen the brush so you just want it damp and if you just if it's just damp, it will pick up the powder. You all you want, what you don't want to do is any droplets of water in the pot. So as long as your brush is just damp and not dripping in water, you'll be fine. Do you know what? I think I might catch my breath for a minute. I ain't shut up for an hour. Let's have a look what that background's doing. Just stuck my finger in it. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Look at that. It's not as dark as it looks on your screen. It's a little paler in real life. And I don't know whether you can see. You probably can't. But it's a proper, it's a proper chalky finish. It's gorgeous. I might just give that a blast. Can I give it a blast? <gasps> Where's my heat gun? Now where would you be if you were my heat tool? You would be in the trolley from TV still. I wouldn't normally do this everybody. I would leave it to dry naturally as you know. But I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. So it's still not 100% dry. There it is. So obviously this is not watercolour card and I've chucked all sorts on this. So let's try and flatten it a little bit. So I've dried it and now I'm going to wet it again. <laughs> no, it was, it was pain. It was a bit of paint in the thingy. So I missed it on the back. That was about 13 sprays and I'm going to pop this under something heavy and just find my dye box. So I've just popped that underneath one of my little pots of dyes. 
just to flatten it a little bit. That wasn't that wasn't watercolor card either, everybody. That was just our normal normal white card stock, so it might be a little bit bumpy. But who cares? It looks fabulous. Yeah, it was pain. <laughs> Right, shall I get a drink and see what you've been saying to me for the last 20 minutes? Uh, did it on purpose. We only decorated once. I did paint a wall at the shop, that's true. <laughs> Jenny, don't give away my secrets. Looks so different, Alison. It looks so different in the pot than on the mat. It's completely different. Completely different because we've we've made a new product. We've we've created a brand new product, so we've we've changed the we've changed the the makeup the the formula of what this product is by adding it to this. And if you do add it to the texture medium you will get a pearlescent sheen. I haven't got time tonight. But if we, if I think I've already done a video on this with the texture medium. Uh, let's just have a look at the flowers, see how they're doing. Oh, that is so lovely. They're not dry yet. Oops. Oh, that one definitely wasn't dry because I've just covered myself in blue paint. Isn't that just gorgeous? I'm not going to force dry these. You know, you know, it's a shame these lights are so bright because that is proper pearlescent in my hand. Oops, I've just squashed the butterfly. Sorry. I'm going to give that a miss because that one's too heavy. better get that color running a bit right oh so whilst we wait we will make our sentiment and i'm just going to see what scraps i've got here so let's just see if i've got any small scraps uh that'll do so we'll do the sentiment whilst we're waiting do you know what, Denise? Denise has just said, for a new crafter like me, it's so nice to see products which are multi-use. And I cannot tell you how, well, I can tell you how many different ways you can use these luster powders. It's not a one-track pony. For example, if I did this, I'm going to do it. I'm supposed to be having a drink, but let's do it. Let's do it, and I'll show you the stamping as well. Oh, that's got green in it still. Oh. That's my fault because I didn't clean my brush. Hang on. If I'm showing you, I'm showing you properly. So you can see the pearlescent shimmer in that. And we can do, we can do what I've just done, which is mix it with the gesso to create a paint. Or you can do it straight on, straight on, oops. like this and if you do it like this I'll put this to one side so I can show you at the end this will have the pearlescent sheen in it 
So let's just put that, I'll put, that on, put it under here until the end. And I'll show you that at the end. So that's two different backgrounds we've created using that product as well, just, just by playing. Right, clean your brush in a minute. But it's, it's nice when, it's like the paints though, all of my paints are multi-use because they can all be watered down. And as soon as you as soon as you have a product that you can mix with other products, it then doubles its value, triples its value, and so on and so forth. Yeah, Julia's got some amazing demos. Amazing demos. Eleven sprays you counted. Yeah, it might be. How many did I say? Six? Or just a couple? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't turn the butterfly into a caterpillar oh linda don't show me up linda's just asked me the most awful question <laughs> right let me get my sentiment done <laughs> and we are having one of the rustic typewriter sentiments tonight and do I go traditional? Yeah, I am. We're going traditional tonight. And I'm just going to stamp the sentiment in black. And we are having... Just because. Just because... Because I like that. It can be for anything. I'm not sure why I've got this ink pad out. Unless I've been using it for something. So just because. And I quite like the rustic typewriter font because it's a little bit squidgy. You've got little imperfections, little imperfections in there because it's meant to look like an old typewriter. So if you if you struggle with your sentiment stamps, these cover a multitude of sins. Just because, 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 because. Oh, I hope there are no copywriters on while I was singing that. I didn't sing the whole verse. Oh, what did I just miss there, Elaine? It was nice. Link for the sentiments. Let's have a look for you. Do, 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 do. Oops. Do, do, do. Where will I find them? Uh, rustic typewriter sentiments. Here they are. Well, blow me. I thought I'd only done two sets, but there are three. Shows you how good my memory is. So there you go, everybody. That's the link for the rustic typewriter sentiments on Facebook. And I'll do the same for you on YouTube. Hiya, Saz. So I'm just going to let that dry for a second. I'm going to check my background. That's much better. It's not dry yet, though. That's much better. Look at that. And it's still not 100% dry. Still got damp bits. What a bonus. Right, let's start putting this card together. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have the blue at the bottom. No, I'm not. I'm going to have the blue at the top. As I mentioned earlier, this, this is a true DL. 
So this is 210 by whatever. I've got three extra, <laughs> three extra layers here. So this is going on there just flat with glue. And because I know this card is still a little bit damp, so uh, this is another top tip for anybody who saves my top tips. Because this card is still a little bit damp, it's actually a good thing for when you mat it onto another layer. Because we've thrown loads of water and loads of paint at this die cut piece the fact that it's still a touch damp where i misted it on the back is a good thing so i've now matted it onto the plain layer look how beautiful that looks and it's so easy to do so easy who would have thought that that and that was that with no shimmer in it at all bloody marvelous so I'm going to pop this underneath my mat here just whilst I'm working. I'm keeping these plain, remember. I'm keeping these plain. And this one is going on pads, but I can't do it just yet. I'll do it on this one. When you learn to type to music on the good old typewriter, wow. <laughs> nice try, Saz. <laughs> Saz has just said if she puts a if she puts a layer of card on her skin, will it take the wrinkles out? <laughs> So this is obviously just getting me some foam tape. So I'm doing preparation. Oh, I need to tell you all as well. Let me just do this. Let me just do this. Because my next... Emma, why don't you get booked on my online workshop? I've finished the project today for the next online workshop and it is stunning. I'm going to say it, it's one of my favourite projects that I've ever done for an online workshop. I cannot wait to do it with you all. It's taken me two days to make it. But that's because I've been bitting and bobbing in between. And it looks incredible. If you want to join in on the next online workshop, the bookings close in a few days. So I've just put a link in for you. It is on Easter Sunday. You don't have to be there in person because I do send you the videos afterwards if you can't make the live. If it's your first time, I want you to get booked on. We go at a lovely pace. There's a lot to do, but I, they'll all tell you I don't rush anybody. We go at a lovely pace and it's a fantastic project. It's not what I've written on the description either, by the way, everybody. I've changed it. <laughs> right, so we've now got the uh, top layer. And we've got here our, our circle. Our two circles. So remember I said to you at the beginning, I'm leaving these plain white. So the, the elegant eyelet circles are staying plain white. And this is going to go on flat. This is just so that I've got some breaking colour. So this circle here is going off the page at the top. So let's go about there. So I'm just going to hold that for a second. And let that grab. Yeah, you do get toilet breaks, a coffee break.
I want you, if you've never done the online workshop and you can make it, I want you to get yourself booked on. You don't have to have everything, Elaine. So what happens is for those, for those, oh, Emma, oh, well, good luck. Um, what happens is for the online workshops is, is that I create a new private Facebook group each time. So the only people who have access to the workshop and the video are the people who have booked. Um, so you will get an invitation to the Facebook group that I create, usually about ten, eight, nine, ten days before. And then I give you a list of all the things that I've used. You don't have to have everything that I'm using as long as you've got alternatives, yeah? As long as you've got a couple of alternatives. So, like, I can't tell you, I can't tell you what you need until... Um, until the group is created. But I can guarantee, Elaine, you will have alternatives. Right, so I've just popped that on there, look. You probably saw me fiddle just to try and get that a little bit lined up. And I'm now going to put these other circle on with foam pads. My voice is going. Somebody tell me to shut up. Somebody tell me to stop talking. But this workshop is phenomenal. It's not a quick card, I'm going to tell you now. But I have 100% really enjoyed what I've made. And it's stunning. It's definitely not something you will ever see me do on TV. <laughs> so what happens is we send you all the kit with all the cardstock and... And the extras like the pearls, the die cuts and everything. So you will get a kit with all the die cuts and all the basics. The only thing you have to have is stamps and the and the paints and stuff like that. But more often than not, if you haven't got the paints, you can use oxides. I'm just see where I'm at. One more. There's always an alternative that you can use. Right, I'm going to stop at that and get this on. So we've used the circle, but I've taken it off the edge. And you will understand why when you see this all put together. Oh, I hope you do. Just make sure I've got that in the right place. I need to put another little bit of foam pad underneath there. I didn't put enough on. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. So that's what we've done up here, look. So those of you that know me well enough will know what I'm going to be doing with this card. Yeah, you even get an uncensored fill. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sharon. Have a drink of coffee. I'm doing it. It's nearly all gone. Uh, we've got this little embellishment here, but we're going to have a casket. So do you see what I mean about leaving this white? So by leaving this white... We've toned down the background, but you still see bits of it coming through the eyelets. This is why I love these circle dies with the eyelets in them. You still get the colour coming through, look, from underneath. How pretty is that? <laughs> Uncensored Phil. 
I just just to clarify, don't mean I swear at you. <laughs> but you might get extra bits of gossip. Oh, it's just before your birthday, Sharon. That's lovely. That'd be a nice birthday treat then. The online workshops are worth every penny. They'll all tell you the same because it's projects you don't see me do. They're all brand new projects that I do just for the workshops. It's not things that I've made before. Well, I've just told you it's taken me two days to make the one for, for the next one. So this is a plain white layer. Plain white there, with a bit of blue on there from my finger. That'll have to go to the bottom now. This one is also going on foam tape. Hey, we're not doing bad, it's quarter past eight. <laughs> so foam tape again because that's how I roll. If you go if you have a go at this, you can obviously do it flatter. But you know I don't post my cards and I don't give them to anybody they get displayed in the shop. Apart from my mum who got one of the cars I made on one of the workshops last year. <laughs> and luckily, Karen didn't send her the same card. So we are getting through this. And I've made this from scratch with you. This was all just white cardstock when we first started. So let's just pop that one on. Oops. Make sure it's straight because if it's not, it will. Oh, I've just head butted the camera, sorry. I mean, look how pretty that looks already. So put that to one side. No, I can't. I've got to do the glitter. I didn't use the dandelion in the end. That's designer's prerogative. Just got a glitter to go on the edge of this. I'm going to do the glitter first. I'm going to show you something in a minute which is really, really impressive, even for me. Let me see if I can find it. So in that blue, I bet you can't see it though from the screen, but in that blue, you can still see some of the mica powder, some of the shimmer. And that's after we've mixed it with gesso, which should negate the mica. So that shows you how good a quality these powders are so diamond dazzle Let's see if i can just get under there because that will annoy me is it I love these eyelets. I loved them when I first designed them. And I remember how awkward they were to design because I've kept the holes completely symmetrical. It was an absolute meh. So unlike some holy dyes that I've seen out there where they've just put them on and not bothered to line them up, these are absolutely bob on. There we go. 
So I'll pop that to one side. So we've got a little bit of diamond dazzle blinging. Flowers, that's my snotty nose. So we've got the flowers in there. Look at this. That's from my inky box. That kitchen roll has been in my inky box for ages. So we've now got the uh, the butterflies are dry. The flowers are almost dry. They're not fully dry, but they will do. So let me just show you what's happened. So if I wiggle this, you can see, look, we've got the pale blue. We've got the pale blue base and we've got flecks. We've got little flecks of the luster powder. So that is the same product that's given us two different effects. It's just incredible. So you do need to just give them a blow because where the card was dry, the powder won't set. That sound effect is me. <laughs> Oops, that one might have a bit of spit on it. Right, so second tip. Hi, Helen. Oh, bless you, darling. Well, I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, my fingers are minging. So, top tip coming your way. Can't use that stamping mat, so we'll use the big one. So because we've used luster powders, I'm gonna shape these using my bone folder rather than rather than what I normally do on my mat. They're not quite dry yet, which is a pain in the neck. And when you try this yourself, everybody, you will see that I've, I've actually got some texture from the paint we've created. So I'm just making the big flower first. And trying not to kill the, not to pull the petals off. So if I show you this, you'll see just how different the flowers look next to the pale pink. Oh, it's gorgeous. There's so much texture going on, it's, it's unreal. So layer these up. I love the shabby blooms. They just make such pretty flowers. This little one's still a bit damp. And I'm gonna use just a plain pearl in the middle. So no gems tonight. A plain white porcelain pearl. And I've just picked that up for Sue, so, because I know she'll be watching me. So push the pearl in with your tweezers. I've got so much glue in there. Look at that. How absolutely beautiful is that flower? So we've got the pinky white marshmallow look background where we've used the paints. Got a bit of blue on there from the tweezers by the looks of it. And then we've got the texture, the little flecks with the luster powders and that gorgeous shimmer in it. How beautiful is that? 
So let me just quickly whiz through these flowers. They were last year, Linda. Let me show you what they look like. Because um, if you remember, last year's flowers were A5 sets. So you may not have got them all. So these are the shabby blooms, look. And that big flower is using the second one down. That's the biggest one, which is big. But I've used the second one down. I know there's not many of the shabby flower, any of the shabby flower dies. I'm gonna try and do this with the shaping tool because it's quicker. These flowers are still a little bit damp. Which is a nuisance. And I told you all I've lost my favourite shaping tool. I've left it at the telly. It's gone. I left it at the studio last week. And it's gone. <laughs> So I've had to order some new ones, some tonic ones. I thought I'd bought some to be honest, but I can't find them anywhere. You can tell I like white pearls, can't you? <laughs> I need some more actually, that's usually that's usually a lot fuller. So I've so the the big flower is doubled up. The smaller ones in pink are individual. It looks so pretty. I, I'll try and take a decent photo tomorrow. I'm rubbish at photos. Karen's better at it. But I will try and take a decent photo for you in the morning and pop it on the Facebook page. So let's just get this done. Let me show you these leaves now, look, because these leaves have dried. If I wiggle that now, you can just see that we've got tints of the golden green in there and it looks lovely with these pale blues and pinks. Just a little pot of pearls, yeah. Oops. It's only the white ones I've got so many of though. And then we're gonna repeat that process with the blues. And the blues are, these are doubled up. I would normally spend a lot longer on the flowers, as you know. But we've still got to put it all together. So all I'm doing with the shabby flowers, in case you've not noticed, is I'm just, I'm literally just pressing at the end of the each petal. These luster powder dustings look beautiful. It's like the best of both worlds from one product. You can tell when I'm doing flowers that I'm in my comfort zone. I haven't seen half of what you've said to me, but I will look later when I'm having my dinner and a cup of tea. Well, coffee, I don't drink tea. Look how beautiful these flowers are. Oh. Lush. 
So there's just a few flowers for this card. What colours have I used? So the colours I've used are the Luster Powders, Helen. You'll see it properly when you get to the, watch the video. Uh, and I've used Cornflower Petal. Summer Coral. And Verdigris. Well, I, I think they're all, I think these three colours are from the Botanical set. So just have a look because it is better to buy the sets. I know it's a bit more in one go. But it is better to buy the sets because I've put the colours together for you. So these are individuals. I'm just telling myself. We are on the last leg. And I quite like that I didn't put any luster on the butterflies because they look really pretty. Let me show you. Look how lovely them butterflies are. It's been like a whirlwind, this demo. So pop that to one side. I would have left things a little bit longer to dry, as you know, but time is of the essence. Oops, I've just squashed the butterfly. Where would you be if you were my pointy tweezers? I don't know. These will do. They are very candy pastel, apart from the lemon. I didn't do lemon. I do like three colours together, but I think lemon would have been too much for this card. I'm just going to chop this on the guillotine so it stays straight. Right, so here we go. Let's put this all together. Shabby blooms are stunning. If you've got this year's floral finery dyes, which I know most of you have now, the uh, because the this year's dyes are smaller, they actually work really, really well with the shabby flowers because you can use them for stamens and what have you, the smaller flowers. In fact, let me just show you, look, this is one of this year's floral fineries. So you can see the edge is completely different to the shabby edges, but it works really well together. Works really well together, look. So I'm just poking these back up because the glue's still wet. <laughs> Poor butterfly. <laughs> right, here we go. Glue gel. Cocktail stick. And let's get this show on the road. Oh. Well, I 
you know what? I can't even remember drinking my coffee. So we're going to start, as always, with the big flower. And these are going to pop on and off the page. So the big flower is going here in this corner. Maybe not with this tube of pin flare. It's drying up. So you know what I'm going to do with that, don't you? You know where that's going? Straight in the bin. And I'll take my TV tube. Yeah, this is my favorite bit, the assembly. So this is the tube that I had in my trolley from TV so that I might as well use this so it doesn't dry up. So this is going just on the inside, just on the inside of this uh, circle. And I want it to just, just a little bit, look, hang off the edge of the page. And then we've got the two blue ones. I'm gonna sneeze, no I'm not. So the two blue ones are going next to the big pink one. Not that I'm obsessed with things matching. <laughs> pink flare and pearls. <laughs> I'm just looking at YouTube. Pin flare and pearls. So we've got the blue one going under here. And under there. Oh, I love this already. Before I've even finished it, I love it. Two pink ones next. And to think all this colour is from two products. It's just from two products. Which I... I know I'm biased because it's my product. But take it from a crafter of many years... It's, it's quite remarkable. I remember the days where you were buying things that just did one job. Just bear with me a sec, I need to go and blow my nose and you don't want to hear that. Better I can breathe now. <laughs> Stop taking or take and buy fell. You can still hear me blow my nose. <laughs> so we're cascading these flowers. This is why, remember when I said I was putting the circle off the page? Because the sentiment is going to tuck under here. Just like, I might go there, just now. I'm going where I originally planned. So let me put that on first. I think the pollen count must be high. I've got 
Oh, it is. It says record high on my computer screen. It tells me it tells me the pollen count and everything, and it says it's at a record high, which would explain a lot. So I'm just popping a little sentiment on. Just because. Trying to make sure that's not hanging over the edge of the card. And then we're going to cascade the flowers up and down. And you all know that the leaves go on last. The foliage gets tucked in. And it's one of the it's one of those things when you see the background. I mean, most of you trust me now anyway, but it's one of those things when you see the background, you think, oh, it's a bit heavy. But it's it's actually not when you balance oops when you balance it out. So continue with the cascade. You could make this in the workshop, Mel, easily. Easily. So almost done, almost done with the flowers at least. So you can tell that there's gonna be more flowers at the bottom than there are at the top because I've got more space at the bottom than I have at the top. Sorry, I'm at the Faffy stage, which is my favorite, as you know. And now for the foliage. So the foliage has now got that lovely golden greeny tint, remember? So this all needs snipping to make it sh much shorter. I couldn't have called these anything better because lovely leaves is exactly what they are. And that lovely golden green shimmer is fabulous. So here we go. So I'm not, oops. I'm not gonna shave these per se. What I am just gonna do is just bend the, bend the fronds back. So I've got one triple one coming down here. So you can see where I've left the, well, hopefully you can. You can see where I've left the gaps for the leaves. And then one triple one at the top. turning the card upside down it's easier so I'm going in the opposite direction with the triples so I've got one going off the page one coming in the page and then the doubles the doubles are for the middle part of this card 
It's a Wonder Ball. The double, oops, I'm just trying not to drop these because I've done it before. This is why I like to put the leaves in last. you can see where they're going and then the last job is our two little butterflies and you know I break all the rules and I like to put two on because who's gonna stop us so I know where these are going we've got one going there The other one is going there. Hang on, let me just move it up a bit. And then the last, do you see what I mean? Look how beautiful these eyelets are. It's so elegant. That Just that detail is lush. If you haven't got them yet, well, I actually don't know if there's any left because we only had a few when I first started. But if you haven't got the eyelet circles and the slimline elegant eyelets, you need to be getting them in, in your stash before we've got none left. So just one last job to do, and you know what it is. We're just gonna have a couple of random pearls. Couple of random pearls. And when I say a couple, I mean about five. So one, two, oh, I don't know whether I need five, three, I don't think I do. I've got to have one up here. Four. I've got to have one more. No, four it is. Four it is tonight. That's, that's a small one. I feel like I need one. I feel like I need one round here, but it, it won't look right. So I'm not, I'm gonna stop there. How easy was that? How easy was that card to make? Uh, mister? Can anybody see the lid for my glue? Here it is. I'm going to have a little swelly of that coffee that's fermented in my cup. Look at that, everybody. When have you ever seen me finish a coffee? Wow. And then I'll do a little close-up and let you see how fabulous that card looks. And it was the easiest thing in the world to do. You've seen me do this from start to finish. 
And how beautiful. I can't tell you how much you need the luster powders in your lives. Even if you've got one set, it's going to open up a whole new world of crafting possibilities. You need the luster powders and you need the white gesso. So all these, all this colour, every bit of colour on this card is from the luster powders. How beautiful is that? And that lovely little dusting with the powders on the flowers is really, really beautiful. How gorgeous is that? And it's just so easy to do. I'll try and take a proper photo for you in the morning. Um, and if not, Karen will do it when she gets it at the shop next week. So, Karen, will you just, just do me one more favour? Oh, thank you. Hope says it's posh. Thank you. Just like me, love. Just like me. Um... Just pop the link on for the luster powders again in the slimline dies because I think they're going to be gone. So let's do, what can I do for the giveaway? Do, 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 do. I don't know because we've used everything. Uh, 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 uh. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the, lust, the lovely leaves dies. And Karen can tell me off later if she wants to. But I'm going to give away two sets of the lovely leaves. So if, if I pick your name and you've already ordered them, just, just let me know. So as ever, uh, let me do all the social stuff first. So if you haven't, please do make sure you have liked and followed our Sentimentally Yours Facebook page. Our Honeypot Crafts Facebook page, which is the shop. My own Phil Crafty Martin Facebook page. My Instagram. I need to get the shops on here as well. My Instagram is Phil M Martin. My TikTok. And I did do a little TikTok yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember. I did a little TikTok with this card. The one I did last Thursday night. Uh, so my TikTok is Phil M Martin. My Twitter, surprise, surprise, is Phil M Martin. And please, if you haven't yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Crafting with Phil Martin. And the last thing I'm just going to remind you for the people that joined us late, our facebook group is crafting with phil martin and sentimentally yours and we will have another um exclusive live bundle demo in the group on thursday evening and that's just for the members of our facebook group so if you're not in the group you don't get to see these special fabulous deals so good luck everybody i will pop over to youtube and draw the winner first so here we go. If you win, you need to send me an inbox message on the Sentimentally Yours Facebook page with your name and address and just a little reminder of what you've won. And tonight it's a set of the Lovely Leaves dies. So good luck, everybody. I'm going all the way to the top of the comments. Remember, you can share the videos as well for me on your Facebook pages. Get these nut. Let's get these numbers up on YouTube, everybody. So here we go. Unfortunately, my mouse has just stopped on my sister's name. And Kevin can't win anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've just seen a comment about asking me to help with plastering. That's never going to happen. And Carol, apologies, I didn't see your question. Carol was asking me if I was using watercolour card and I wasn't. I was just using our normal white card. So the winner on YouTube is Joan Peak. So congratulations, Joan. The mouse has stopped on your name. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure we've already got your address, actually, Joan, but just send us an inbox message, please, with your name and address and a reminder that you've won the Ye Lovely Leaves die set. So thank you, Joan. Everybody on YouTube, remember, if you haven't yet, get in the Facebook group and then you can join me for another live demo on Thursday evening at 7pm UK time with a special offer bundle. Make sure you get your slimline dies because I know what's going to happen. So over to you, uh, Facebook. Good luck, everybody, on Facebook. And there's 700 comments for me to squiggle through. So good luck, everybody. So I've just gone right to the top. I'm just squiggling around so that it's fair to everybody. So my mouse has stopped on Christine Kugel. I hope I've said your name right. So congratulations, Christine. You've won your set of, you, you, you have won yourself a set of the lovely leaf dies. So same as Joan from YouTube. Send us an inbox message with your uh, name and address and a reminder of what you've won. So thank you, everybody. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. Go and get your luster powders. Oops. There's there's. But there's about 20, 25 colours to choose from now, or the sets of five. And I will see you again on Thursday evening at 7pm for a, for Frank, well, frankly, an absolutely phenomenal deal. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I will see you on Thursday in our group.